Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Thursday, September 11th, 2019. My name is Rich, and joining me to cover stage two of the AW11 Vegas Finals is Bijan. How are you making out? Feeling great, man. Feeling good about this season. I am saying it now. We are going to have a winner, a final completionist, American Ninja Warrior, whatever you want to call it, total victory. It is happening this season. And the reason, well, you know what? I'll get into that towards the end of this episode. But Stay tuned. But I'm super psyched, bro. Bold prediction with dozens of people going into stage three. Yeah, well, you know, I, <laughs> I, I make those those big calls, you know, <laughs> that's why I'm the champ. Champ is here. All right. So, yeah, it was a bizarre stage two. I don't know what is going on because, like, we've had a stage two just decimate the field year after year where it's like two out of whatever number, 20 people has been able to get through. It's just been absolutely awful. And this year, 75%, 21 out of 28 people made it through. It's ridiculous. It's refreshing. I am all for it. I mean, I don't want to see this every single year, but I, I don't know. I felt I feel like it was a breath of fresh air, and um, it was quite nice seeing so many people that have never made it to Stage 3 make it this year. I mean, it, this is big moments in all of their lives, and I was really happy and thankful to see it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to be that kind of person where I'm going to be like, oh, this is a travesty, because let's be real. Next week for CH3, that is going to be a decimation. But um, I'm very excited. I'll be a little bit of the jerk here. I would be extremely thrilled to have seen it in person. And I I don't begrudge anyone that made it through. I think it's wonderful for all of them. But it sucked a lot of the fun out of stage two for me, I got to say. This episode was not one of my favorites. Really? Um, I, I kind of feel opposite. I found it really refreshing. I mean... Very, towards the beginning, it kind of sunk in like, oh, I we are going to get a lot of finishers. Um, like it just was pretty obvious, um, just the way everybody was going. So for me, yeah, it it took away a lot of the drama, and I I fully feel like all that drama that's that where you're on the pins and needles and stage one and three, um, that one's kind of gone. But in a way, it's kind of just a rewarding thing where you get to see so many people happy, you know, jubilation. And not only that, we did see some really, really great runs, which we'll get into later. But um, I don't know. I was all for it. None of these obstacles were just gimmies. I really like the fact that this year, Stage 2 was pretty much all transition obstacles. And not like a transition like easy, but a transition where it's one of those obstacles where you're not really muscling or toughing it out. That's really, I feel, going to be all of Stage 3. But it's really just like, jump to the next one, jump to the next one. You have to hit it perfectly or you're going to fall. And it's just a lot of people got it right. But I don't know. I liked it. There wasn't a ninja killer. And I think that's what really, I feel, for you probably took a lot of the fun out of it. Which I fully understand. But um, I don't know. I still enjoyed it. My issue was not... Actually, I can't really nitpick the course too much. I just think the time limit was too forgiving more than anything. And ah. I have some inside info. I actually got it from two different places. And we normally don't share this out. I usually, you know, we, we get that a lot. I get a lot of people reaching out, giving us inside yes, scoop. Yes, we do. Sometimes too much. But. Yes, <laughs> yes. But I got to say, I have to share this one because I feel it's very relevant. And I have to shame them a little bit here. The real time limit was 3 minutes 30 seconds. Okay. They modified the time left or sorry, the time left was accurate to the three minute, 30 second time limit, not the three minute time limit. So they made it seem like there was more of a time crunch than there was. And we saw there definitely wasn't. So if they had actually had a three minute time limit, there would have been a lot less finishers. So wait, wait, wait. I'm kind of confused. What you're saying is the ninjas had three minutes and 30 seconds yes. on the course physically there. But the show on the show, what they were showing, like giving us, it said three minutes. Yes. So the on the show, they said that they had three minutes. 
But if they had only had three minutes, anyone that finished with less than 30 seconds left wouldn't have finished the course if that had been the case. Uh. So I don't know. I don't like that they gave us the wrong time. If you're if you had 330, show us 330. That's the only reason I'm going to call it out, because that's just outright lying. Like you gave them a lot of extra time. You made the course essentially easier, but you know, that's okay. I think it did need to be toned down some and I, I don't have an issue with the course, but just be honest, like be honest, like you, you overestimated. I think it's a couple things. I, I think the ninjas had a really great night. There's really, should have been more fin- more fails on that snapback and stuff. Um, So, I, I mean, there's a lot of things that came into play, but 21 out of 28 that's too much for me I, I no more than 10 like 10 would have been a great number and i would have been very happy and i think that's about where you should be aiming for like, yeah they got a lot more well i mean i think the issue was snapback the ninjas figured it out um they even called attention to it where there was a technique involved where you basically like wrap your arms around it and you, it kind of like you glide your forearm down to and you basically like catch your your for your fingers like it's a hook and and that basically nullifies the obstacle and i don't know i give props to the to the ninjas they figured it out and they figured it out early so that that obstacle was kind of nullified not fully of course but you know it was nullified for a major portion of its difficulty and then the I forget its name. That that weird spinning thingy that took a, that replaced the uh, the the nun, the the wing nuts. You know, I found that very creative, very visually. Um, like I I like that a lot. And honestly, I thought it was going to be the first obstacle. I would like to see that implemented again, but as maybe the first obstacle or something to the effect of where wing nuts are still part of this course. Um, it could even be you know. Um, I guess nerfed like you you've always suggested you know but I, I i felt like the main the one criticism i have for this course is the the wing nuts were such like an insulation for sage two of these past few years it really for me i was missing it a lot and and hopefully we see those in stage three but i just have no idea and i don't really see how they would put it in stage three because it just feels like such a stage two obstacle but um yeah i felt like those were missing yeah, I liked Grim Sweeper. Um, I'm iffy on the name, but other than that, it was a good obstacle. I think maybe the- Grim Sweeper. That's pretty brutal. That's that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Right, but I I think maybe the drop between them should be bigger. There's got to be it's got to be upped a little bit. There's too many successes for a position that's normally the Ninja Killer. Even before Wing Nuts, that's where we had Roulette Row and uh, whatever the chain one was that we had that took everybody out like that's usually where the field gets decimated and we really didn't have it with this one yeah i i fully agree man um but that's that's fine let's get into the runs man yeah yeah let's do that um actually before we do that let's talk about the other obstacles for a second because we had a very different stage too i was very excited to see the cores uh Mm -hmm. giant walk the plank it's all right Eh, i mean it's there it's a walk the plank it's it's fine in in the position it's at. Extension ladder, um, basically it's a crisscross salmon ladder with some different size gaps. I think that's a, a good change and a good uh, appropriate yeah, spot. It's creative. I I was surprised by how effective it was, and like I thought that would really mess up a lot of the ninjas. They they really figured it out quite often. Maybe maybe they should do something where it's drastic, like small then big then small then big. I don't know, but. I feel like there is some potential there in modifying it. Yeah, I think it was, I mean, it had about the fail rate you'd expect. I don't want a lot of people going out on the salmon ladder. You want to go see them go a little deeper than that. No, I feel you. I just, when I first saw that, I was like, that is evil. But man, <laughs> yeah. it did not, it didn't really mess up too many. I'm um, snapback. We already covered. I like that obstacle. I think it's good. Uh, swing surfer. I like the modifications. They really made it a lot tougher, I think. Yeah, I mean, I've never been a big fan of any of the obstacles where you have to jump a giant gap, but I really like that dismount portion where they got rid of the rope. I I mean, I found that really creative. I would have never in my life uh, thought of that. Yeah, it looks, it looks scarier. I actually thought it would take out more ninjas. It did take a couple, but yeah, that was a good change. I like that. 
Uh, Grim Sweeper recovered. The big sweeping arms. You have to jump from one to the next. Yeah, uh, they're f- cis, which is why the, the name, but it's still dumb. <laughs> I really liked it. Um, sweeping in different directions, too, so they got to kind of go back and forth. Uh, and then Water Walls, which returned. And uh, I love Water I Walls. I like those. Yeah, they 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 create they present such a different type of obstacle. You can really see it messes up a lot of the ninjas. It t- it zaps so much time from certain ninjas. I mean, it, it really at the very end it gives so much drama. Like you you just figure they're they're gonna make it, but like in situations like Matisse and we've seen Naji before, like it it really can play a spoiler to a few people, and I liked it. All right, so let's get into the actual runs here. First up, we had Dan Palizzi. Uh, taking the course, he ended up missing his left hand completely on the snapback when transitioning across. He was our first fail of the night. Yeah, that sucks, man. I have to imagine he actually was one of the first runners because I felt like once ninjas figured out how to do it, it was uh, they they weren't not making that mistake. <laughs> uh, after him, we had Matisse Kid Owadi, and I was like, oh no, and I, oh you know what they've got the the safety passes that kind of makes sense to have the, have them go early on and they did a really good job of running all the safety passes early in the episode i thought that was a good idea same here but since he was the first one instantly in my head i'm like this is not good now there was a part of me being like oh well maybe they'll mess with me but <laughs> <laughs> no imagine they didn't have the safety pass like they actually would have made how many one two three Four more people get knocked out like on their first run here. Um, spoilers, I guess. But Matisse, <laughs> they mentioned, is having was having kind of a tough time after Vegas last year. He's having panic attacks. Didn't think he would compete this year. Um, has a safety pass. Definitely, you can see on the course he he's, doesn't have the confidence and the swagger that he normally has. He was he looked very strong on the obstacles themselves, but you could read it on his face, right? He just wasn't quite feeling it. It was, he seemed shaken. And, um, I, I don't know if this is the right terminology, but I feel like he really, this episode and all of the struggle that he went through really, really helped him. And I think this and the ultimate long end will really help him. Um, you know, in terms of just in terms of the viewership and people connecting with him, I think this could have been this is one of the best things that could happen for him in terms of like entertainer star potential. That said, um, I feel for the guy, you know, panic attacks, anxiety. This stuff is really real. It happens to a lot of people. And um, it's it's pretty rough um, when when even when I was at A&W, you could see people just really nervous on the sideline and everybody has their own ways. And um, I'm really glad that he was able to battle through it. Yeah, he was making great time on the course, uh, but ended up peeling on the transition to the second blade on Grim Sweeper and uh, had to use his safety pass. Yeah, I'm really glad, you know, he had that. Uh, after him, we get to see Carson Voiles also with his safety paths. It's his sixth year competing, his third straight year on stage too. That's what I mean. Like this Car- Carson, I mean, they gave him some, pre- some pretty good segments this year. I just feel like, I feel like he's underappreciated a lot. And maybe it's not that the show doesn't show him, but maybe we don't, uh, appreciate it enough. No, I fully agree. Um, there's a few people like that, honestly. Um, People like Carson Voiles are the reason I really enjoyed this episode, where it's people that have gone so, like, make it to stage two year after year after year. And, you know, this is this course is not a gimme, but I, I can finally see them hit, you know, the buzzer and see that genuine joy. And I'm going to get into it later as to why I think we're actually going to get a winner this year. But it's just really, really exciting seeing so many fresh new faces in stage three. All right, so Carson ended up falling, unfortunately, uh, on this run. He missed the transition. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but he has a safety pass. But you guys pass. know what I mean. He did yeah, have a safety, got the safety pass. pass but <laughs> yeah, he missed the transition on the snapback because he overshot it. Uh, basically, like, kind of like Drew Dreschel did uh, a couple years ago with the uh, wing nuts. Just a little too strong going through. Yeah. After him, we had Nate Burkhalter, who... Oh, I love this. What a crazy segment. He got food poisoning after stage one and was sick as a dog all day long. Got barely any sleep. 
Um, and on top of that, if that wasn't bad enough, he was in six months of rehab after injuring himself testing swing surfer the year before. So Brutal. like he's got everything working against him here taking the course. What he did you place? 12... What kind of odds did you give him on this? I mean, I really didn't give him much of a chance at all, especially once I saw him on the course. But this dude, they said he lost 12 pounds of fluids. Do you know how insane that is, bro? Like, this guy must have, like, been completely on E. He must have been like a walking zombie out there. Yeah, you could see it written on his face. Like, he looks strong, and he, he did his best to, you know, put on a good show. He, he really did well for that, all things considered. But when he got to, like, snap back, you could see he's just exhausted. He managed to beat it, which was impressive. But I was like, okay, so here, we get to see him beat. Presumably, he's going to beat Swing Surfer. That's the big story for him. So that's why they're showing his run, you know, in addition to what he had going on. But not only did he take down Swing Surfer, he takes down Grim Re- Sweeper, which totally blew me away, and then beat the course with 1.96 seconds left. I was super in to this episode at this point. Yes, I loved this. Um, his story, like, it's not like a happy story, but the fact is that he suffered so much and he showed so much personality in just his story in terms of hurting himself, you know, and the food poisoning and everything. He gets video segment uh, of the week. Visually profound video segment of the week, I should say. And also this run, he gutted it out and struggled from the very moment that he stepped on that course. He was already hurting, but he had a smile on his face and he struggled and you could see it on his face every single moment after Like, as as you said, I don't want to rerun the whole thing, but after every other episode or obstacle, he's just huffing and puffing, completely spent, but yet he never gives up. He keeps going forward. He keeps moving forward, and at the very end, he makes it with less than two seconds left. Easily, athletically profound, run of the night. I mean, this dude was amazing. This run was amazing. I was on pins and needles at every moment. So much drama, and I'm um, just so happy for him. I, I hope he's okay by the time stage three comes. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if he will be, but yeah. I really hope he gives it his all. And um, yeah, this was great stuff. Yeah, I completely agree with both of those picks. Fantastic run. Highlight of the episode right at the beginning. So uh, next up on the course, we had Dave Kavanaugh, who also has a safety pass. Fell on the giant walk the plank. He didn't pause and get a good run up the plank. He just rushed it and fell. That is crazy, man. Um, I mean, I, I will say this. This this part reeked of, you know, he just went for it. And I don't think if he didn't have the safety pass, this is the way that he would have fallen. I could no. be completely wrong, but I feel like this was one of those moments where, hey, I have a safety pass. Let's just go for it. See what happens. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think he probably was more focused on making good time, maybe and maybe not being quite as cautious as he should have been. And uh, yeah, but he gets another chance. He gets to use a safety pass and come back later on. Yep. After him, we had Michael Torres, who is the last safety pass run. Uh, and his segment was about him connecting with his Puerto Rican roots, learning how to make his mom Spanish rice, taking some... Sp- salsa lessons and relearning spanish kind of a cute segment i guess for you man it went long i'm like this dude is probably going to do great because there is no reason i'm learning all this about michael torres it's like yo one of those segments is fine but why they gotta do both i don't know yeah it it dragged on a little bit for sure um but i I kind of felt good for him like I, i felt like like you said i thought that boded well for him and i think he's kind of a underappreciated star of the show one of the top ninjas so well, uh, i'll give him that's his due. true i mean I, <laughs> hey i mean maybe it's making up for all the times it's been fast forwarded <laughs> yeah. so yeah i can't complain too much uh he was looking very good cruising through beats the grim sweeper with lots of time left struggling with the first door and catching his breath but he managed to beat the whole course with 11.86 seconds left on the clock Yeah, I mean, we've seen this a lot this episode where ninjas are looking so strong, but then they just jump into that water and all of a sudden they are completely gassed. And like, I get it. The water messes up your breathing. You're already tired and you can breathe like 
I've been in situations, I mean, obviously I do a lot of uh, obstacle course racing, you know, where you're breathing hard, but you have that, like, that steady, like, breathing, right? Like, it's fast, but it's steady pace. But as as soon as you mess that up, you, all of a sudden, you're all kinds of messed up. So that might be happening right there. Um, that water, man, it, I love it. I, I would hate to be in it, that situation, but I love everything that it presents in terms of messing up these ninjas. I wonder how much they are not appreciating the weight of the door. Like, are, are they just looking at it like, okay, I dive under the water, I pull the door across, like it's just a sliding door. It's weighted, right? It's very heavy. It's, oh, it's weighted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's very apparent. <laughs> like, I think they forget that once when they're goofing around, like, you know, not taking it seriously when they jump into that water. Like, you're going to have to pull it pretty darn hard to get it to move. But I think that's another element where you can't just go down, pull it out, like, pull, pull the door open, and then, you know, uh, go on to the next one. Like, in those situations, by the end of the course, you really don't have that much time. Like, unless you have insane cardio, uh, sorry, unless you have insane cardio, but most of the time, these guys are already huffing, puffing. They only have, like, what, maybe five seconds to jump down, drop down, do something before they need another breath of air. So it really messes with them where they, they, that that door and the weight just really messes with the the timing of doing everything in one felt like um smooth sweep yeah after that we had some fast forwards including alex blick who went out on the swing surfer and lucas reale who finished the course and i was like oh boy we're fast forwarding finishes of stage two that's telling me a lot I mean, it, it was already telling me a lot. I'm like, this is going to be an episode where everybody's winning. I, just, you know, going through. I don't know. I was just excited. I was like, yay. I, I was already in my head like, oh, so-and-so gets to make it. And so-and-so gets to make it. Finally, I get to see Flip Rodriguez on stage three. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I shouldn't have thought that. But that's <laughs> what I was thinking. So you're to blame. You cursed him. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Flip, next on the course is Flip Rodriguez. Uh, who they show taking a hit right to his quad on the diving boards, reminding us of what happened on stage one. This is his sixth time on stage two, and he has never hit the buzzer. Brutal, man. Yeah. Um, looking good on the course. You know, you can see him, you know, tender, a little tender with it when he lands on a spot or two, but it's mostly upper body, so it's not too, too bad. Big jump on Swing Surfer was the big question, and he was able to do it, which was fantastic, and manages to jump to the wall from the Swing Surfer, so that was good and uh, reassuring, but the clock is ticking away. He only had 35 seconds left when he hit the water. I was watching that clock, so the second he hit the water, he had 35 seconds left to do the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, he was struggling. I mean, it's a situation where... Just think about this, where he was clearly injured, and he's hopping to each obstacle. The fact that he was able to like make that swing surfer was amazing in in itself. I mean, this was this really showed how much heart this guy's has. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he did end up timing out on the last uh, water wall, and uh, still went through and hit the buzzer. I don't know what was going on there. If he didn't realize that it ended, just wanted to do it anyway. But that was so hard to watch him just laying there, just devastated. Like, I feel like Flip, more than anyone on this show, just wears his heart on his sleeve, right? He's so passionate about the sport. When you see those disappointing runs or he falls when he's not expecting to, you just feel so bad for him. It's just written right on his face. Yeah, um, he's just somebody that you can connect with um, on an empathetic level, like, easily, and I feel for him. It's brutal, and this run, in any other episode, would easily get the <laughs> athletically profound run of the night, just be for the pathos involved, you know? Um, but, I mean, this, uh, this is the kind of run that he'll look back on fond like look back fondly on, I have to imagine. And the fact that he really just genuinely gave it his all. And I mean, time ran out. I mean, 
I don't know. I'd have to watch back, but it could have easily been the buzzer just ran out while he was underwater. You can't hear it that much underwater. So, and with adrenaline running everything else. So he might've been just been hyper-focused. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, it just felt like a gut punch immediately as a viewer watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> After that, we had some fast forwards, including Ben Wales, who was a walk on who I don't know if we got a segment for him all year. Like this walk on that made a stage two really kind of flew under the radar. He went up out on walk the plank, unfortunately. Um, but Karsten Williams, who got fast forwarded, managed to finish the course and moves on to stage three. Yes. Go Karsten, man. That's awesome. I'm sure his mom was like losing her mind. I bet. I bet. And speaking of moms losing their mind, yes, Adam yes, Rail yes. <laughs> takes the course. I mean, Adam Rail's mom has to win, like MVP mom, right? Like, who's like? There are some amazing moms out there. Um, uh, Nick Nick Hansen's mom comes to mind, and a few others, right? But Vicky Rails, there is something about this woman. I feel her. Like on a on a genuine level, I feel that anxiety that she feels. <laughs> Oh, she's wonderful. She like almost steals the show because she's just so, so utterly terrified. And it's not fake. Like, that's the thing. It's not like put for show. She looks so mortified at every second. And like when he prevails, he looks she looks so happy. Oh, I love that woman. Me too. I would love Vicky. If you're listening, please join us for an episode sometime. I would love to pick your brain about what's going through your head on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, I actually met her. She is the sweetest damn lady. Um, so Adam's segment was about him starring in a car commercial. He's become a local celebrity in Phoenix. Well deserved. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah, his mom really pretty much stole the show at that point. And then. We'll, we'll have more time watching him when he wins a, a million dollars. <laughs> exactly. I mean, really. I mean, we're going <laughs> to... He's one of the few. Like, there, there's definitely, a, a, like, a good five ninjas where I'm like, don't be shocked if they win. <laughs> yeah, Adam's one we've been watching for a few years now and just putting it all together this year. So, so happy for him. Very solid. Sitting on top of the wall after the swing surfer. Was very... Very happy to see he made it to the water walls and he just had ridiculous amounts of time left. 30.8 seconds and does a one handed like handstand with the buzzer. There's a big flourish to end it all. Capping so a very, very, very uh, cool run. Yeah, this guy was amazing. Um, there's not much to say about this run because it was just really perfect. I mean, I was nervous with him going to the Salmon Liar just because he messed up um, last year out of this major, major fluke. Um, but yeah, I'm super, super happy for the guy. And uh, I'm so, so excited to see what he can do in stage three. Like, hey, maybe he'll shock us and he doesn't do as well as I think he can do. Um, I feel like we saw him on a and All-Stars versus the World or something doing stage three before. But um, I don't know. I really think this guy has a lot of potential in stage three. And... Yeah, man, it's great. Once he wins uh, American Ninja Warrior, I want to see him on Sasuke. And after he beats Sasuke, I want to see him on Ultimate Beastmaster. Uh, yeah, there you go. That'll be the new trifecta. <laughs> For real, though, <laughs> dude, dude, if somebody does all three like that's that's super legit. But the real jaw dropping moment of the episode for me was next because we had three fast forwards of finishes Chris DeGange, Kevin Carbone and Tyler Gillette all fast forward finishes and I went my my jaw hit the floor because we're halfway through the episode and we just, <laughs> we've got eight finishers so far I mean that that said everything you needed to know right Rich <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like well <laughs> sit back and there you know there's not much to worry about just enjoy the ride um pretty much it was like is there gonna be any shocking falls but it's like we can pretty much expect darn near everybody to finish the course at this point i mean hey flipper didn't make it there's always a chance right there's always a chance that somebody could fall but yeah kevin carbone really really happy for him and um 
Oh my gosh, what was the other guy? The the guy that, that always, he's always seems to be paired with Kevin Carbone. It's Tyler Gillette. Yeah. Tyler Gillette, thank you. I feel so bad, I even forgot him. But yo, Tyler Gillette, really happy for that guy because um, those two are like the major, major diehards. That's kind of their story is that they're super into a and uh, And I have to imagine this is like a dream come true for them to make it to stage three. I like how they do like more subtle puns for Tyler, right? He's looking sharp on the course. And I'm like, what? Oh. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Ugh. Like, I get it. It's fine, but I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but next on the course, we had Grant McCartney, the Island Ninja. Looking okay, this for- part. Now, Go going into this, because at this point, I have already decided that everybody's making it through. I am like, if Grant McCartney makes it to stage three, Every single person <laughs> at NBC might just explode from happiness. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. What if Grant McCartney wins a million dollars? What if he's the next American Ninja Warrior? Like, could you imagine? I wouldn't even be able to, like, I open up my computer, and somehow there's a virus on my computer with NBC plastering him on my screen, <laughs> give, showing ads. Like, he's just going to be everywhere if that ever happens. Pretty much, yeah. I think you can guarantee that. Um, but the focus of his session, his uh, segment was is looking for love. He's he's on a mission to it. to find someone. It was a nice change of pace. I liked it. It was cute. And yeah, like it was four, so it was kind of like you know, sure, Grant McCartney is gonna have trouble finding a woman. Okay, right. sure. But but I I found it fun. What was confusing, and I should have looked this up before we recorded. They show him competing in Ninja Warrior Germany, and looks like he got total victory. Or was that just like that was, stage that one was celebrity edition from what I saw like on the screen. So I have to imagine like I don't necessarily know if he got total. Uh, hey, I w- didn't watch it. I, we, we should probably look that up, Rich. But I have a feeling it was more like, hey, he's doing this stage and this stage. You know, um, that's my guess. Yeah, I Either think we would have heard. That's awesome. There's no way we wouldn't have heard that. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. A&W would totally like <laughs> they would make a 30 minute segment on him, you know, in his journey <laughs> winning, right. you know, A&W Germany or something like that. I feel like I'm talking crap about Grant McCartney. I'm really not. I like I like the dude. I'm just saying they would yeah. love it if that ever happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's clear. You're, you're not saying anything against Grant, just that we know he is the perfect face for the show that they love to put out there. Oh, 100 percent. The better he does, the better for them. Yeah, I think the only thing that better that could ever happen for NBC is like if somehow Grant McCartney and Jesse Graff get together and get married and have a child. <laughs> like like and that would be like, you know, Simba from the Lion King or whatever, like the the chosen one, so to speak. Speaking of, I I, I got to say before we talk about Grant's actual results here, uh you mentioned Jesse Graff, go right now. Well, no, not right now. After this episode, go download the latest episode of the official AW podcast with Jesse Graff. Fantastic episode. Highly recommend it. Lots of stuff going on behind the scenes on her run this year. So very, very cool. Great yeah, job, Nikki. Um, th- there's a lot more to her story this, this season. Um, and she really delves into that. And uh, yeah, I, I feel for Jesse and I'm very excited to see her next year. So for Grant's run though, he's fallen on salmon ladders twice before. And as I was typing that sentence out, he did it again. Dude, I mean, I, I don't know, but the way he fell, it it was weird, man. Like, it, he should, like, clearly we've seen him do salmon ladders, and it's early on in the run, but it kind of just seemed like out of nowhere. Yeah, it really did. It was it was a, kind of a freak run. Maybe he fell prey to the gap, but I feel like they would have called that out if that was what made the difference. He just He just messed it up. And if anyone's going to not overlook the salmon ladder, you've got to think it's Grant, and we know he can do it. I don't know. It's, it's, it just seems to have his number in Vegas. Yeah, I mean, the way he, he did it, he wasn't doing giant leaps of gaps. You know, like he didn't go from one rung to the other like a big jump. But I don't really fault him for that because they were smaller gaps in the rungs. Like, maybe he missed mislooked i don't even know the ter- the term but you know he maybe he overlooked it or something but ah uh, that sucks like if there was a if there was ever a year for somebody to get stage two this is it and also this brings back to something that i was really thinking about i so wanted to see 
like the female ninjas on this course. Could you imagine, Rich? I think there is a very, very good chance. Jesse Graff, Jesse LeBrec, you know, Lissa Beard, like all of them, they would have had a really good shot at finishing this course. I'm not going to say they're going to win it. I mean, who, who knows? But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I feel like we could have had a female um, on stage three this year if, if they made it through. But, I mean, hey, they fell on stage one. Stage one's no joke. But, ugh. God, at least give me one of them on stage two. That would have been awesome. Deganji is the the measuring stick, right? If I don't Deganji know who that could, is. <laughs> Lebrecht's fiance was able to complete oh. stage two. Therefore, Lebrecht could have beaten stage two as well. So it's, it's, it's a little frustrating. Yeah, 100%. Um, but next on the course, Joe Morovsky, who has competed for seven years now. It seems crazy. But that makes sense because he's one of the first competitors I remember watching when I started watching a show. Like, I thought it was so funny that this average looking dude was doing so well. Yeah, I, I remember when he first came on and uh, he physically, he he really didn't seem all that special or anything, you know? I'm like, this weatherman dude, okay, well, I don't expect much from him. Because, I mean, th- those were the years where it's like, hey... I'm a farmer, I'm a technician, I'm a whatever. You know, I, I, I guess it's still like that, but even more so, like, the gap between people that <laughs> are doing really well and the gap where people are like, hey, I'm just this dude on the show, um, where it's pretty extreme. I didn't expect much from him, and he floored me with his skill. Yeah, yeah, he pretty much got everybody. But it's kind of funny because at the time, it was because his his build wasn't so crazy over the top. But now he's looking back fondly on that because he's got supposedly dad bod now. Dude's right, still ripped, so but... <laughs> dad bod. Okay, we got to talk about this. Like, technically, he has a dad, and technically, he has a body. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess he's got dad bod, but, like, if that's the new bat dad bod, I'm super out of shape, bro. Like, <laughs> this, this guy is, does not have a quote-unquote dad bod in the slightest. Right. He had, like, an inch of fat like around his belly but very good tip for any new fathers out there he is not wrong right that is a thousand percent what happens do not eat your kids leftovers throw them out feed them to your dog do not eat your kids leftovers you will pack on the weight very quickly i would just like to say i do not agree with rich and don't don't send the hate mail to me send it to rich (laughs) (laughs) yeah this is voice don't, of experience. Don't waste your food, people. You Ten know what you do? Per kid. You make your child eat the food. That's what you do. No, also a bad idea. Don't. Force feed them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it from me first. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, anyway, Joe had this little segment. It was cute. He's looking as solid as ever on the course. I mean, what's there to say? I don't know. Like, <laughs> It's Joe Morowski. I mean, he, he, did, he did fantastic. There was nothing really scary about it. Uh... He had this weird... His dismount on that Grim Sweeper had me a little nervous. Yeah, that one was that was a little sus. I mean, he could have. I don't know, man. In situations like this, really, like Joe, you really gonna risk that? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he could have easily rolled off that, but hey, he didn't. So that's cool. Yeah. Other than that, though, I don't have much to say. Nah, he was he was great all the way through. Uh, had forty eight seconds left on the clock. That's absolutely crazy, but good for him. I and mean, then I, I have to imagine he's got to be so over the moon. Like he, he's got to be really happy with the fact that like with what happened last year with him falling on stage one. Now he's finally back to stage three and can get revenge on it. I'm, I'm excited for the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they mentioned that they had nine finishers at this point out of the 17. So that's a 53% completion rate. And that's nowhere near as high as it ends up being in the end, but crazy. That's, that's with, you know, a lot of the favorites still to run. Dude, I just thought of this. Could you imagine if, you know, either of them, Isaac Caudiero or Jeff Burton made it to, like, actually made it to Vegas and, like, made it here? Because they're both, in my opinion, easily completing Stage 2. And I know, hey, who knows what could happen, but, like, either of those two on Stage 3, Wow. And you know what? I'll go on to one up on that because the guy that I always said would would do well on stage three, like oh Josh Levin, I uh, the dream is still out there, Josh. You got to come back next year, bro. I know you're going for for the Olympics, but man, 
I I can just imagine Josh Levin like doing so well on this. Yeah, come to think of it, you know, Brian Arnold, Josh Levin, Ian Dory, all probably kicking themselves a little bit for not running this year of all years. Oh yeah, Brian Arnold. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, like Ian Dory and all of them are great, but Brian Arnold in particular. That that would have been something to see. Speaking of top named ninjas, Tyler Smith, the pest control technician. Oh my gosh. Is next what? up. I feel bad. Have we heard of this guy before? Because I have no idea who this is. I was completely dumbfounded. I think we probably did, but uh, he eludes me. I was like, uh, okay, sure. Whoever this guy is, let's let's go. It was a whole lot of this guy is going to do very well because I have no idea who this guy is, and they're giving him a whole lot of time. And, uh, I mean, he's got a story. I mean, it's I don't know. It's a story, but they, they really give it a lot of time. I was like, this guy, he's got to do well, right? Yeah, he's got he deals with a lot of pests and he's got four kids. I mean, sure. Uh he's looking like a veteran on the course, making really good time. And probably my favorite thing from his run though is the backyard ninja kids screaming his head off on the sidelines. That was amazing. <laughs> they <laughs> they were going crazy. You can that hear one boy him. in particular was like, "Go!" Like I thought that kid was going to like bust a blood vessel like that that kid was losing his mind the best part to me was not when they showed him like that part you know that was fine that was funny but it was when they weren't even showing him you could hear him on the sidelines he was screaming so loud it was great um this guy i figured you know with the feature that he had and everything else the fact that we don't know who the heck he is uh i knew he was gonna have a good time but wow 102 left on the clock like nuts absolutely nuts time yeah really happy for the guy um i mean let's be real i can't see him completing stage three because i still don't know who he is but i'm really happy he had a great time and a like just did fantastic on stage two yeah yeah i feel like he might have gotten featured more this season i guess like you said if he had beaten the whole thing so uh, so <laughs> I take a little issue with the next thing that was said here. After him, we get this quote from Akbar. Th- this is the best set of ninjas we've ever had on stage two. No, it's not Akbar. No, it is not. Don't even pretend. Like these are the same ninjas that were here last year for the most part. It's the chorus. It's different. Yeah, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. What else can he say? He's not going to say that. So <laughs> no, I guess not. But like, don't pretend like the ninjas are just suddenly so great. I mean, they do well. Maybe I don't want to take that away from them. I'm being a little salty because we had three more fast forwarded finishes after this, including Ethan Swanson, <laughs> R.J. Roman, and Carson Voyles all finishing the course. Yeah, and they're all they're three stars too. I mean, they're not like the top stars, but like their names. Yep. Yeah, Carson had a. You know, had some time earlier in the episode. Well, I guess he didn't get a feature then either, but he, they showed his full run earlier. Um, yeah, Ethan, they're going to show him. I was more shocked by Ethan because they're, they're, they've got to show a lot of him on Siege 3. Yeah, yeah, they got to save some. Yeah, Ethan, I mean, he's got to keep an eye out for guys. I, I don't know. I've been overlooking him, but not anymore. This dude has been killing it this year. Uh, but next on the course to get a full run is Dave Cavanaugh, who is making his second shot after falling uh, early uh, and using his safety pass. He goes out on the extension ladder, just missed the top rung, wasn't quite able to beat the uh, extension ladder this year. And uh, yeah, that's all we get to see from Dave, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, just wasn't the course for him, I guess. Yeah, but next up we had Josh Salinas, Iron Josh, who was married in Cozumel and lost his ring when doing a water obstacle and uh, has a pretty cool shirt with the flashing lights on it, kind of like uh, Iron Man. I, like, I it. like it. That is dope. That is some creative stuff. Good on him. You know, thinking outside of the box, I appreciated that. Um, unique wedding. I mean, typically I don't care for these types of videos. I mean, so I'm like, oh, good for you. You know, cool. But Hey, that was uh, that's that's different. Like having, you know, wedding and then basically an obstacle course on the water. That's pretty dope. Yeah, I think that tied it in well. I, I think if it was just the wedding 
story, it might not have been enough. But the fact that they were doing water obstacles and stuff, I think that's that's good. I like it. Yeah. Uh, he w- <laughs> he went out in, on snapback in OKC, but the so the question was, will he be able to beat it this time? And of course he was, and he was on pace for the fastest time, and did it with a one hundred three eighty left, setting the new bar to be beaten. Uh, with some very fast ninjas still left to run the course. I mean, the two major points that I took from this was, first of all, dope, dope pose that the guy does. I love it. And second of all, oh my God, is the big dog ninja huge. Like, <laughs> he just towered over the the rest of Josh Salinas' family. I mean, this guy was massive. So um, there you go. Those are my two talking points. All right. Speaking of... Uh, big dudes. Brian Stratus was fast forward next. Who was able to finish it? We are going to see Ryan Stratus on stage yes! three. You get a ding for that is so amazing. Like they they hinted on it, but like, dude, one of the OGs is going to stage three this year. I am so psyched for him. When you think about like the genuine passion and commitment that this guy has given to American Ninja Warrior. I mean, this is the guy. I mean, it used to be a joke. This guy would cry all the time. Like, this guy really, really cares about this stuff. And I can't, uh, the passion, whether he fails or not, just the fact that he made it to this point, I'm so, so happy for that guy. Yes, and speaking of OGs, after him we had Lauren Ball, whose family is from the Philippines. I had no idea. Did, yeah. like, did you have any idea that it was Filipino? I would have <laughs> never in my life guessed that. Nope. Not in a million years. That was actually very interesting. Perked up my, definitely got my attention. Yeah, man. Interesting story. I liked it. Uh, we got a lot, like, Lauren Ball, <laughs> other than his breakdancing and stuff like that, and, like, I really don't know much about the guy, or I haven't, and we've seen him, like, literally since a started. And, um, yeah, this was really good character development, so to speak, for the guy. Once he's able to beat the snapback, that becomes like the furthest he's ever been on the show. From what I can tell, they said he had only made it to the third obstacle, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but he fell on the spring surfer wall in like the one place that I thought he was safer than anywhere. Like of all the people to go out there, that's very, very reminiscent of like a parkour jump. Yeah. Um, that sucks. I mean, I, I feel bad for talking crap about him last week in, in a fun way, being like, oh, he's not going to complete Siege 2 because he never right. does. But, um, you know, after, like, when he got to the swing server, I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to get Lauren Ball. I'm so excited for him. And that's just, uh, like, the one obstacle that kind of plays into your to your wheelhouse. Um, it sucks, but, I mean good on him for getting that far it's only going to boost his confidence going into next year and yeah i I hope we get to see him make it you know go further all right next up we have matisse owadi returning to the course uh having used the safety pass he's really looking uncertain by the snapback but he's making it through struggling on the course managed to get the grim reaper or it's a grim sweeper that name is driving me crazy Uh, he's struggling with the first door on water walls, but he was able to get the buzzer with 11.53 seconds left and looks completely dead. Like, what does he have left for the rest of this course? Yeah. Um, once again, this is probably one of the best things that could happen for him. This was a much needed, like, jolt of pathos into um, Matisse's overall story and lore um, of his time on American Ninja Warrior. And um, these are the types of runs where you really feel for the guy. Like, you you just feel sympathy, and I don't know. I loved everything about this run. He was struggling. He he kept cool, though. Um, he stayed focused. You know, you just you just wanted all the best for him. You felt for him. Also, he, he's literally a kid, in my opinion. Like, he, he, he just, he's young. He looks young. You know, everything about that. And you just kind of, like, want to root for him, being like, it's going to be okay. Um... And I don't know, his struggle in the water walls, you know, um, that was some real stuff. And I was just cheering him on at every moment of it. And it was kind of uncomfortable where, you know, you're really just seeing somebody like struggle mentally, physically, everything involved. But you just want them to get through it. 
and he was able to prevail. Um, Matisse Awadi gets tied for a likely profound run of the night. Um, he had an immense battle in this episode, and it's one of those things where I think he he garnered a lot more fans and respect from people. And and not saying like he didn't already, you know, but just something where if any of those fears that I had where he was going to get the Casey Catanzaro treatment from people that were where completely wasn't deserved. But um, these are the moments where I feel like anybody that had those types of perceptions of him completely like you're basically inhuman if you're going to still feel that way. Like he really showed just how much heart he has. And um, I, I just really ha- I'm happy for the guy. Uh, yeah, it, it just was a powerful situation, like seeing him just collapse, you know, at that buzzer. Yeah, I think, like you said, I don't, <clears throat> I think it does help his story, like you said. Not, I mean, it's it's not done for story. It just plays into it well for as far as drawing in fans. It's it's what he needed because nobody likes a superhero without, a, you know, a weakness, right? He has to have those moments of vulnerability and we just got that. And I think it really does, it makes us care about his runs that much more yeah i mean honestly when i think back to all the runs he's ever ran in his life this is probably the one that i'm gonna think of the most when i think about matisse and not in terms of like me oh he struggles through his runs but just like that was that moment where i really was like oh my god this is something special all right some more finishes fast forwarded next we had hunter gerard Seth Rogers and Casey Zuhaki all completed the course. Yeah, all very fast up and comers. Um, happy for them. I feel like they're they're some of the new breed ninjas that we're gonna see like three years from now. Like really have a name for themselves. So that meant we had nineteen finishers with two runs left to go, and Drew took the course. And throughout his entire run, I was thinking, well, who the heck's running last? I couldn't think of who would get billing over Drew Dreschel. And I was really? like, I really couldn't I, instantly. I was like, it was Daniel Gill. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Completely but, forgot um, about Daniel. Yeah. I mean, for me, I was, I was happy. I don't know. I, I was like, Oh, well that's, that's cool. It's Daniel Gill. He's another person I can completely see winning it all. So I could totally see them featuring him. And, but for me, it wasn't like, oh, this is a spoiler. I was like, Daniel Gill probably had the fastest time. Or he just looks strong. I mean, maybe they just don't want to feature, you know, um, Drew Dreschel, like, at the end all the time. Because that would that would be pretty lame also, right, Rich? If, like, no. it was always Daniel Gill or Joe Morosky at the very end. I mean, no, no one needs that at all. No, make Drew last. Make Drew last, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It didn't matter. It wasn't that bad. I, I didn't care. I mean, really, we had so many finishers this episode. I didn't really care at that point. Um, but Drew's run. So they they really focused. They went hard on like his preparations. Um, he was almost like trash talking the other ninjas in a weird way. Like, did you? How so? I didn't catch that. I guess trash talking is a little strong, but it was like like other people trained for this. I live it. I sleep. I've changed my sleep schedule. I run these intense courses that are longer than all of the Vegas courses combined, like on a daily basis that other people can't even do the course. Like I am going to take this down this year. Like yeah, it was, I mean, oh, it was sorry. almost too much. I mean, it was right on the border. I think it was fine overall, but it was like it all but said, you guys cannot keep up with me. I, I didn't take it that way, but I understand what you're saying. I mean, if anything, he's like other people train like, you know, a guy can podcast all year round and train for a week and go on the show. But, you know, like I live this. That's <laughs> that that's my, my perception of it. But like the, the I really enjoyed watching his segment in terms of like his preparations. I mean, it's something where you really see how much it means to him. And I, I, I found it very fascinating, his preparation style terms of him taking what I think he said like 25 obstacles in one course without stopping that's insane um things like that are really in- interesting in my opinion like something that I want to know more of and him changing his sleep style so therefore he can get used to Vegas um just everything involved was in my opinion very fascinating 
But it was the only thing I could think about the whole time, like when you really think about it, Rich, he does all of this craziness and he trains so hard. If, if this was literally any other year, out doing all this training would have ended on stage one of Vegas. Could you imagine? Well, that was the thing. Like, that kind of took away the point almost, too. It was like, well, dude, you, you slipped up on tire run just overlooking an obstacle. Or it seemed like he was. Like, it seems crazy to put that much effort into it. And then to make what seemed like a silly error... But maybe not. Maybe it was, you know, I don't know. It was odd. Um, but For I gotta me, say, I did appreciate showed... the segment. I, I know I kind of almost trashed on it a little bit, but it was a really good segment. And it almost uh, changed my mind on something I had been thinking earlier today, listening to the Jesse Graff interview that I was mentioned earlier. I thought, is there anyone that trains as hard as Jesse Graff does? And that was answered by seeing Drew's segment. I would say very clearly he does. Yeah. Um, but for me, more than anything else, it cemented the fact because I loved it all the whole time. But I don't know if there's haters, but if they are, there are, y'all need to shut your mouths or stop the typing. The safety pass is an absolutely fantastic addition to the show. And I'm so happy for it. It gave great, you know, um, you know, uh, I don't even know the term, but, you know, it it raised the stakes for the qualifying courses and the finals courses. And then you see the results here in Vegas, like what? Five of the six guys needed it. It's actually very useful. And it's something that I feel even next year, more ninjas are going to fight for. I mean, I loved it. So just saying um, if there I don't know if there's any like people hating on it. But if there are, y'all need to shut it. (laughs) <laughs> I haven't seen too much, surprisingly. I think there was some initially, but I haven't seen much recently. Uh, Good, I haven't, I haven't been looking awesome. very close, I guess. Um, So, yeah, the one thing about Drew's run, though, what was with the weird twisty technique he was doing on snapback? Dude, I don't know. Sometimes, guys, don't be too cute. That, I like... Needless to say, I'm not one to criticize Drew Joshua of all people in terms of the technique, but it did not seem like a good idea. Um, no, I don't think it was for flair or anything. He, I, I don't know what no, the benefit is. Flair, I know but, he, he's very methodical and he wants to do things in as few movements as possible, but I can't see what the point was there. I think he wasn't expecting the snapback to have as much reverberation as there is like a, you know, a, like, um, I don't know the term, but like it would go upwards if he swung too hard the other way. And I don't think he was expecting that. But basically, I was messing up his movement and I was really worried that that was going to be the thing that, um, <laughs> know. you know, made him fall. <laughs> I mean, just I get it. This is one thing that made him stand out from the pack is having unique, creative ways of getting through obstacles. But this was one that I don't think he should try to do <laughs> um, in future you know, years if it comes back. Yeah, I think it just didn't work. Um, <clears throat> well, it technically worked. He got through, but it was it looked very dangerous. And thankfully, he was able to do it. And for some nice flair, he does a weird dolphin jump into the water, which I absolutely loved. I love it. I mean, how how often do you see this guy, uh, Drew Dresho of all people, have some personality on the course? Um, I loved it. It's been a while. Like he used to do it all the time. He used to do you know backflips and weird things to try to drive everyone in. But he's been so serious the last couple of years trying to get that total victory that uh, it's kind of taken away some of the the flair. Mm-hmm. He ended up beating it with thirty five point three four seconds left. So he's moving on to stage three for his fourth time in five years. Happy for him. I mean, I it, I wasn't surprised, but I'm happy for him. So that brought Daniel Gill to the course. In this episode with 20 finishers so far, will they have a fall be the last run of the night? <laughs> of course <laughs> not. not. Like, what was, what was the chances of Daniel Gill of all people falling? I was like, if they make, if he put a fall at the end of this episode, I would be so angry. Um, I didn't think they did, but I, I was kind of laughing at the prospect. Like, 
so they bring the clock up on the board. Could you imagine? <laughs> he has, uh, yeah, he had 105.57 left, beating out Josh Salinas. Like, it's just no problems for Daniel on the course. He just chewed up the whole course and spit it out. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad. Once again, I don't really have much to say because it was just so fast and good. But, I mean, Daniel Gill, man, he's he's something. He He's great. He's very much turning into, I can't say the new Joe Morowski, but, I mean, he's the guy that's very, very fast shockingly fast where it doesn't seem like he's running through it but yet he just gets through it so dang efficiently all right well that was it for this episode uh oh man we got uh, more to talk about uh we, stage we three bro final final episode of the season do you think somebody is going to achieve total victory yes yes i think with 21 people it seems like a given so this is the thing the reason I in particular feel like there is going to be a uh, a winner, maybe even multiple winners, is the factor of <clears throat> when there are a lot of people on a course, like hitting a stage, and there's like a ninja killer. And you have to imagine there's going to be multiple ninja killers on stage three. I think it's going to be a bloodbath next week. I don't think stage three is going to be a gimme like stage two. Um, the Oftentimes, there are... there's so much talk in and figuring it out from the sidelines with the ninjas um there's going to be a lot of strategy going into the final runs like the final people running that course um whatever ninja killer is there there's probably an idea or a new strategy implemented for them um not only that though finally we're going to see a lot of ninjas that have never been to siege 3 actually take on siege 3 that are actually built very well for the obstacles there um i don't know just everything culminating into one another sometimes it's kind of like mma you know it's really about styles make the matchups and in this way you know, somebody with a background in rock climbing or gymnastics or something like that might do really well uh, some as opposed to somebody that you know, has a different background that hasn't, you know, been able to complete stage one or two before. So all I'm saying is we're going to get a lot of new fresh faces, people with different backgrounds on stage three. And I feel like at least one of them, or if not multiple of them, are going to figure out how to tackle on those obstacles. And stage four, I mean, it's a rope climb, whatever. I, I don't think much of it unless they change it. And boy, do I hope they do, but I don't think they will. Um, I mean, stage three really is the way to the million dollars. I feel like I'm not, that's, that's mean, but I mean, it's how I feel. Um, that said, Rich, give me, give me three people. Who are your three picks for making it stage four? And oh. you know what? I'm going to disqualify Drew Jeschel and Joe Morosky. Let's just assume they're, they're there. So who else? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to go Ethan Swanson, Josh Linus, and Adam Rail. Ooh, I like those picks. My picks are Adam Rail, Daniel Gill, and oh, I'm forgetting somebody. Hang on, let me. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of who's what. What's the final like uh, number or like people? Who's unique? I, I as much <laughs> as I'd like to think Matisse Awadi is going to make it, I want to see a. I, I'm trying to think of a rock climber. Who's a rock climber? We, we we need a rock climber in there. Oh, I don't know who in here is a rock climber. Uh, do, 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 do. I mean, a lot of them are like trained ninjas above all else. Like they're not really specialized outside of ninja. We're getting to that point where like, like do you call Kevin Carbone or Tyler Gillette climbers? They're they're just pure ninjas, I think. Yeah. Um, RJ I mean, Roman. I mean, I'll have to say, I'll have to say, Ethan Swanson. Or you know what? Just because everything in my body wants this to happen, I'm gonna say Ryan Stratus. Yes. Just because I want that to happen so badly. So those are my picks. Um, other than, of course, the obvious two, I'm gonna say Daniel Gill, Adam Rail, Ryan Stratus. All right. So we both have Adam Rail. Interesting. I mean, I'll switch up. Real. I'll switch up mine. I mean, so I guess he, he, <laughs> just to pick oh, somebody different, because I'm I'm kind of regretting uh, skipping someone here. So I have Ethan Swanson, Josh Salinas, 
And I'm going to pick Chris DeGanchi. Let's go with that. You can't pick somebody that isn't here. Are you talking about, <laughs> like... Uh, Lebrecht's fiance. Lebrecht's well, fiance? Yes. Well, say his real name, Lebrecht's fiance. Don't be rude. So, okay. Lebrecht's fiance, Ethan Swanson. Yeah, th- those are some good picks. Um, damn. If Lebrecht's fiance wins, that is something. Oh, oh, I would love it. It would be so great. Especially if they engrave it, Lebrecht's fiance. I think that would be uh, amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. On all the posters, Jesse Lebrecht's fiance, <laughs> American Ninja Warrior. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. We are going to have uh, an awful lot of people going into stage three and potentially stage Which four. Which is going to be so fun. Like, if you, if you poo-pooed on this episode, right, for everybody making it, you are not going to get that next next week, bro. This, like, next week's going to be fun. It's going to be a bloodbath, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll be good. Um, and it's going to make for an interesting Stage 5 Ninja Ward this year, which we have not really been talking about at all leading in uh, towards the end of the season. Man, there's... There's a lot of picks. You know what is exciting? Because I always got annoyed where it's like, oh, we're going to pick the top ninjas of the year. Okay, well, who made it the furthest this year? Okay, blah, 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 blah. Guess what? Not this year. Well, I mean, if there's a total victory winner, let's be real. I mean, they're going to have to win. But, like, if it's not, slate's clean. I want to see some really fun, interesting picks, y'all. Oh, Y'all need to give me suggestions. We want, or at least I want to hear on Twitter and Instagram. I want suggestions for categories. I want suggestions of your top picks. I want to hear all of it. That's right. Breakout performances for male and female of the year. I got to thank some of the early favorites. I mean, we got to think Brian Burke's going to be one of the top contenders for on the male side. Maybe um, Sandy Zimmerman for the female ninja of the year. But there's so many strong competitors. So, yeah, send in your suggestions. We'd love to hear them. Uh, we will be having um, some guests join us again this year. Not going to say <laughs> I haven't checked with them yet, but I believe it will be the same we've had before. We will see. Um, and we will be getting, for those that aren't familiar with Stage 5 Awards, we compile the votes from other, what do you want to say, ninja Influencers, content creators. people, content creators, everybody that covers American Ninja Warrior throughout the world, um, they all basically uh, pull together. Everybody has a vote, and we all decide the winners. It's not just like Rich and I. It's it's actually quite a large number of people that that um, you know play or are part of the pool, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure everybody's voice is heard, and we will have people's choice options as well, so you can get your opinion heard for your favorites so before we wrap up this episode which has gone a little long but always happens with vegas but john do we have any five-star reviews this week yes we do we got one from gabriel from los angeles i love this podcast i really don't have any friends who also watch a and w and get really into it. So every week I look forward to this podcast to hear people enthuse about the episode. My favorite thing about the podcast is they're not afraid to tell it like it is and call out some of the obnoxious edits or stories in the episodes. But all out of love for the show, of course. Thank you so much, Rich, from Los Angeles. You are the best. Guess what? Of all the people this episode, guess who I'm calling out? You, Gabriel, for being amazing. Keep going and keep being awesome. LAX, represent. I hate the fact that you guys got the Chargers, but I'll let that slide. (laughs) Gabriel from Los Angeles, you get the five-star review of the week. Gabriel, I got to say that was one of my all-time favorite reviews. Uh, because I was in that same position. It's why I started the podcast, knowing that I was able to help or that we were able to help. Sorry, we were able to help someone else out there without someone to talk ninja with and that you get to feel that that way that I was hoping. Uh, I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much for writing in. Yes, 100 percent. Thank you. And um, that's also one of the reasons I joined the podcast. Exactly. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at ninjapodcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And Bajan, how can they reach you? 
Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B-I-J-A-N-151. You will not hear from me this week because I am going on complete social media blackout until the f- I watch the, the season <laughs> finale. I do not want to be spoiled. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I've been avoiding a lot of it too, just for that same reason. But thank you all so much for listening this week and have a wonderful weekend. Peace, love, and deuces, y'all.